it's the biggest thing I think we struggle with. It's, you know, I want to kind of, I'll use the same example. I want to date someone and I want to have a good relationship, but I don't think I'm worthy. That's an incongruency and the mind and the body. What, what made you, th- let me ask you this, Chelsea, what made you feel that you were not worthy? What made me feel like I was not worthy? Mm. Is that the question? Yeah. The, okay. So, oh, you know, I guess I'd have to dig a little deeper with that. But I think that the biggest thing for me was as a kid, I didn't feel worthy. I mean, we go back so much to our childhood. So it was, it was not having a good relationship with my dad. It was not having a good relationship with my family to thinking that why would someone want to be with me kind of attitude. And I think more than worthy, it was the unlovable part. I thought that there was some essential ingredient missing that I didn't have that somebody else had. When I went through a transformational program, that was a big thing they talked about was, you know, what do you feel like you're lacking? And it just, I didn't even know, you know, I was like, what is this? So the reason I didn't feel worthy was I felt I was always lacking something. Mm. because I didn't realize people wanted to be with me for me. I thought I had to achieve. I always thought I had to perform. It, it sounds like your, your childhood path was a lot like mine because uh, one of the things uh, growing up, and I know other kids can be mean at times. Of course, I had very light skin, had freckles, uh, had, had the red hair. And uh, <laughs> before, before I hit puberty, I was kind of a roly poly little fellow. And, uh, so, uh, you know, it, it, I, I took a lot of, uh, a lot of ribbing and, uh, you know, freckle face, strawberry and, uh, you know, all kinds of different, different things like that. And then, uh, you know, I hit puberty, you know, slim down and, uh, of course it was the seventies. So I had the long, you know, the long red hair and the sideburns and the, uh, <laughs> big mustache yeah. and all that stuff, you know, uh, but, and then, um, I had a I had a real hard time asking girls out because I felt that I wasn't worthy. I wasn't an athlete, um, and I I was at a school where athletics was you know if you weren't pr- pretty much if you weren't a jock so to speak, you weren't anything. Um, mm. I found my um, comfort zone so to speak in music. I played trumpet, um, pretty good at it, um, but. Again, coming back to relationships and what you were saying is about the self, I didn't feel worthy to to go out with a with a girl because I thought they would be interested in somebody. Why would why would anybody be interested in you, Steve Bryan? Uh, so it was it was a it was a it was a process, and uh, I was very blessed enough to find uh, find a woman. Actually, didn't go to the school. I met her because she was taking care of my mom in the hospital. She was a nurse and, uh, and, uh, you know, 40, uh, 40 plus years later, we're still together. So, uh, yeah, Amazing. It, yeah. <laughs> so I did, I did find the right one. <laughs> <laughs> That's the most it's interesting. Idea. It's interesting that you said that because I thought, Oh my goodness, you know, it's just like me going through and I, I I'm glad you checked, excuse me. I'm glad you touched on your childhood because, uh, a lot of our misconceptions, a lot of the, w- the way that we think comes from the experience, uh, excuse me, the experiences that we faced in our childhood. 100%, 100%. And that's the thing too, is that we, we don't realize it, right? That's mm. okay. I had a really bad week last week, or, you know, this has been a stressful year for me and it's just, things are coming up from your past or, something that you blow up about was really something that bothered you or triggered you years ago. It's just, Mm. it's just triggering you in a different way, which is triggering another emotion. So people go their entire life, not sure if they're with the one or, you know, they, they aren't worthy of being in a relationship and they could be in a relationship with someone. So I think that the big thing to realize is that that's why I go back to that same question I said earlier. I was like, do you love yourself? And Mm. if you're, if you don't get a resounding, like, yeah, I do actually. Like then, then that's something that I think somebody needs to really look at because 
that's something that will change your life when you realize what is stopping you or why you don't feel the way you should. Mm, absolutely. One of the things you, you put, uh, you know, we were talking about the, the interview process and uh, some of the answers to questions that were put to you before the show. And uh, you had put, and I'm interested what you, what you're going to say with this. Are you comfortable? So Chelsea Lee rock, are you comfortable? <laughs> in what sense? <laughs> I don't know. You're the one who put it down. <laughs> are, are, are you comfortable? <laughs> or are you, or would, you, would you ask? Oh, that was one of my questions? Got, you, yeah. So I oh, said, so, uh, <laughs> so you could ask me, Steve Bryan, are you comfortable? <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember putting that. Okay. Um, well, yeah, Stephen, are you comfortable? <laughs> yeah, well, actually, I, you know, right I'm, now, I'm, I'm really comfortable. I'm having a great time talking with you. I am, too. Thank you. I No, I think that's so funny. I definitely am comfortable in my life right now. I would say that there are definitely things that we all struggle with, but I am more happy and, and at peace with my life than I think I've ever been. And that is really the biggest thing that I think that's priceless. And knowing that you have so many beautiful things on the horizon and all these goals that I'm, I'm working on and accomplishing, I'm starting to see and being in love with your, with your person. I mean, all of those things like are just incredible. So um, to answer your question, yes, I am comfortable. And I think that we can always be striving though. I, I don't know why I put that because I'm not, um, I think comfortability can breed complacency so mm -hmm. I like to stay away from that a little bit and maybe I meant to put are you content <laughs> content's a better word I would agree with you because as I looked at that I'm thinking I'm, I'm asking myself that question am I comfortable comfortable to the point where I'm comfortable in my own skin now as opposed to that that struggling, uh, you know, pre-teenager that was was <laughs> bullied, uh, you know, and made fun of because of my red hair and freckles and kind of roly-poly and not really into athletics and so on and so forth. But, uh, you know, as I got older, found, you know, my, my wonderful wife and they got into management, started to understand uh, some of my talents and my abilities. And, uh, and then I really concentrated on, on those things, but it's interesting too, that as I'm, uh, as I was going through that path of, of retail management, uh, and I think you would refer to something similar in your own life is that, uh, I actually got up and spoke at our church. Uh, we were between pastors and, uh, so after I finished, I thought, oh my goodness, what a terrible job that I had done and this godly older lady, I think she's in her nineties now, came up to me and said, Stephen, I think you missed your calling. And I said, Beth, oh. I said, what, what do you mean? She says, I think, yeah, she says, I think God wants you to be a pastor. And you know what? I could not get that out of my head. And, uh, and then started listening to a lot of broadcasts and so on. And it's just one of those things that I just, I've got to do this. Now, at first, my wife thought I was nuts. Uh, but, uh, you know, as it went on, she came to a point too, said, yeah, this is what we need to do. Uh, we moved from the state of Maine to, uh, to New Brunswick. I studied to be a pastor uh, there in rural, uh, rural New Brunswick and ended up being a pastor for almost 20 years. And then uh, this, this passion of helping people kind of direct me in another point because we were going to move to, to uh, Fort McMurray, Alberta, where we are now. I was going to get my master's in counseling again because I wanted to help people. But, you know, the, the path led to working with uh, an agency called the Center of Hope where uh, it's a daytime drop-in center for the homeless, and we started out being a, a coordinator and uh, ended up being executive director of the place for about three years, and then took another job because I wanted this time to do this coaching, uh, and it's it, and this has really just taken off. And uh, but uh, you know, it's this whole thing with um, this passion, and and somebody said this, and uh, maybe you can relate to this. Um, 
your gift will make room for you. Your gift will make room for you. In other words, if you're gifted in passion, there's there are going to be opportunities for that to happen. In fact, I went back to New, Newfoundland and, and spoke with a young man that I had helped counsel uh, a number of times. And he said, Stephen, he said, leadership just keeps finding you. <laughs> I thought, yeah, I guess that's true. <laughs> and, it, and it has, but it's this, this whole, I guess, Chelsea, this whole uh, mindset of of uh, fulfilling the passion that you feel that you've been called to. Absolutely. And I agree with that. I, something similar I've, I heard once where it said the, the gift or I think it's the gift that you had in your heart since you were born is what you're supposed to do. Something along those really? lines. And it's kind of yeah, a like similar that. I, thought. Yeah, it, it is definitely. Uh, Chelsea, we got a, just a, a few minutes left, probably about uh, five or five or six or seven minutes. Tell me, let's let's go unscripted for a moment. Let's do it. <laughs> what is your favorite thing to do? Oh, <laughs> my favorite thing to do. I really, I think it depends on what season. Um, there's so many things I love to do. I really enjoy going to watch like poetry slams. I'm kind of a really artsy fartsy um, nerd. Like I was saying earlier, I was the, the actually president of my theater troupe club. I love going to see improv. That's something that I really enjoy. I love seeing other artists perform. I also really enjoy just, um, just just really enjoying the the um, nature outside. I go hiking with my dog. I like to travel. So I would say those are the big things I like to do. Okay, travel. So uh, we were talking with somebody the other day. If you had, uh, for instance, no limits on, on spending or, or travel or anything like that, top five places that you would love to go to. Ooh, okay. I know this question. I've been thinking about it a lot, actually. I would love to go to Santorini, Greece. That's been on my list for a long time. And I would really love to go to Thailand, mm. Tahiti, yeah. Ireland, and oh. Switzerland. Wow. Interesting. Ireland is on my top five as well. Uh, again, uh, family family heritage, and you trace back to uh, to where my my family is from. So uh, Ireland would definitely be. And uh, my daughter and her boyfriend actually went to Thailand to look into uh, uh, ESL English as a second language. So they toured uh, there in that uh, that area and uh, absolutely loved it. So uh, yeah, I would uh, I would love to go there too. Um, Favorite music? Chelsea, we still get you. Chelsea? Chelsea. So sad we lost you. That's all right. We're at a point where we can splice that together, aren't we, Karina? Yes, we can. I'm going to stop. I'm just trying to resume. Okay, I've resumed recording, so you can just start start where you left yep. off, Stephen, and we'll just added it. Okay, Chelsea. Favorite movie? Yes. My favorite movie, I would have to say one of my favorite movies of all time is When Harry Met Sally. <laughs> so do cheese ball. Um, and then I also really love the old, it's an older movie, and you probably have seen this, Overboard with Kurt Russell and oh um, Goldie Hawn. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. I remember 
she falls, if I remember, she falls overboard and has amnesia because she really did not like him at all. Is that right? Yes, that's exactly it. <laughs> yeah.